This video begins Unit 2. And we're going to start our focus on accuracy and precision of measurements and percent error. So there's two types of measurements. There's qualitative measurements, which are basically like a description or a comparison. For example, it's hot outside today, or most dogs are bigger than cats. So it's a descriptive observation, a qualitative measurement. Think of like the quality of the measurement. Then there's the quantitative measurement, and that's going to involve numbers. It's going to give a description or comparison, including a number or a quantity, hence quantitative measurement. So it is 90 degrees outside today, or the dog weighs 25.9 pounds more than the cat. Now let's talk about precision and accuracy. So accuracy is going to be how close your measurement is to the true value. Precision is how close your measurements are to each other, the reproducibility of multiple measurement. So let's take a look at this figure here um, where we have four different targets labeled A, B, C, and D. A is precise. See how all the hits are nearly in the same spot? That makes them precise, but the bullseye is the true value, and that would be considered accurate. So this one's precise but not accurate. Letter B, the average of these are going to end up being close to the true value, and so this is going to be accurate, but because they're not exactly reproducing or hitting in nearly the same spot over and over again, it's not precise. Um, in letter C, we're going to be both not precise and not accurate. Not hitting near the same spot over and over again means not precise. And the average uh, distance of these is not going to be close to the bullseye. And then finally, these all have hit the bullseye over and over and over again, so they're precise and they're accurate. So we're going to look at these. Let's say the true value is 10.42 milliliters. And we have these four sets of data. Which of these data sets is going to match these different targets? So one of the things that is going to be helpful is to take the set of data and get the average of all the numbers, and then that way we can take the average and compare it to the true value. So here's the averages of all four of them. And so now let's look at data set number one. The average is 10.42. So that's going to make number one accurate. And then let's look at the measurements themselves. They're all very close to one another, and so this is going to be both accurate and precise. So this would be letter D. Number two, the average is 10.44 milliliters, so that's very close to the true value. So we're going to call number two accurate, but if you look at the measurements, 10.42 0.35, 0 0.55, those are not exactly repetitively similar to each other. And so this is going to be accurate but not precise. And so that's letter B. Number three, the average is 8.21 milliliters, nowhere close to the true value. So this is not accurate. Um, but if you look at the measurements compared to one another, 8.22, 0.20, 8 they're all like over and over again repeating each other very similar to each other. So this is going to not be accurate, but it is precise. So that's going to be letter A. And then the last one, the average is 10.59 milliliters, which is not too terribly close to the true value. So that's not going to be accurate. And then the measurements are very different from each other, so they're also not precise. And so that's going to be our letter C. All right, we have an example. An object is known to weigh 5 grams, and that's going to be the true value. Describe the measurements below. If you measure 3.0, 3.1, and 3.1 grams, how would you describe those measurements? Well, they're close to each other, so you'd call them precise. They're not exactly close, however, to the true value, which is 5.0, because these are all threes. So it's going to be but not accurate. Your lab partner measures 4.9 grams, 5.1 grams, and 5.0 grams. So each of these measurements are very close to one another, so we'll call that precise. And then, if you'll look at them, if we took the average of these, that actually averages exactly 5.0, which is our true value. So this is going to be precise and it's going to be accurate. In the last example, 3.9 grams, 5.7 grams, and 5.3 grams are not close to one another. So we're going to say that those are not precise. However, if I took the average of these three, I get an average of 4.96, 
and that's really close to the true value 5.0 so we're going to not precise but it is accurate which piece of equipment would be the best to measure 6.8 milliliters of a liquid a 10 point milliliter graduated cylinder or a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder and explain your answer so let's look at this next page if I have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder it's going to read in 0.2 milliliter increments versus a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder reads in 1 milliliter increments so clearly this one is going to be the more accurate measuring device so if we were to read the volume of this liquid, it would read 8, 8.2, 8.4, 8.6, 8.8, .8, and then I can guess between the lines 8.85 about. So that gives me that 8.85 milliliters. I'm accurate to that hundredths place. To give you a closer look, I'm going to zoom in to this graduated cylinder. So here you can see a little bit more easily how it's 8. 8.2, 8.4, 8.6, 8.8, and then I have to estimate between the lines, so it's about 8.85. Whereas in the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, when I read it, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and now I can guess between the lines. This was 8, and then look, it's between 8 and 9, not quite at 9, so I'll call that about... 8.8 .8. and so this is accurate to the tenths place now we're going to talk about percent error so how many gumballs in the gumball machine the person whose guess is the closest to the actual value is the winner so how do we figure out who is closest to the actual value well if you guess that there are 230 gumballs but there are actually 310 gumballs in the machine then how far off are you from the actual number and so we have an equation that lets us calculate this there are a couple things you need to know about this equation there's the accepted value which is the correct true value there's the experimental value which is the value measured in the lab there's the amount of error which is the difference between the accepted value and the experimental value. Basically, you would subtract these two numbers. And then there's the percent error, which is going to be the absolute value of error divided by the accepted value multiplied by 100. So in, the, in, a, formula, so in a formula that looks like this, the percent error is equal to the accepted minus the experimental Notice the bars. We're going to take the absolute value of the difference between the two. Um, then once you subtract these two numbers, you'll hit divided by the accepted value and then times 100, and then you'll have the percent error. So let's calculate how far off was the guess for the number of the gumballs. So we're going to calculate how far off the gumballs were when the accepted value was stated as 310, but the guess that was made by the student, which is the experimental value, was 230. So we're going to enter these, this information in the equation above. The accepted value is 310 minus the experimental value, which is 230. We're going to subtract those and then take the absolute value of that difference. Then we're going to divide by the accepted value, which is 310, and then we'll multiply by 100. So it's important to note that when you type this into your calculator and your phone is sufficient, that you actually type in these numbers in the numerator first, and be sure you hit equals to get the difference, which is 80. And so now these are going to equal 80, and now I'll take 80 divided by 310, multiply that by 100, and that's going to give me 25.8. And this answer is a percentage, so it's the percentage of how far off the experimental value is from the accepted value. So that's how much error there was in the guess. Let's try another example. A student measured the mass and volume of a sample of aluminum and calculate the density to be 2.55 grams per cubic centimeter. Because this is the value that the student calculated, it's going to be considered the experimental value. The accepted value for the density of aluminum is 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. Find the percent error in the student's measurements. So in the equation, we take the accepted value minus the experimental value 
the absolute value of the difference between those, divided by the accepted value times 100. Remember that when you do this calculation, you want to subtract these two values, hit equals, and get the answer to that, which is 0 0.15. 5. And now I'm going to take that 0 0.15 divided by 2.70 times 100, and that's going to give me about 5.56% error. All right, our last example. You are given a cube of pure copper. You measure the sides of the cube to find the volume and weigh it to find its mass. And when you calculate the density using your measurements, you get 8.78 grams per cubic centimeter. So this is going to be the experimental value. Copper's accepted density is 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. What is your percent error? So the equation states that we're going to put the accepted value minus the experimental value, take the absolute value of those, of the difference between those, divide it by the accepted value times 100 to get our percent error. And so first we want to subtract 8.96 minus 8.78, and that's going to give us 0.18, so these are actually 0.18 is the difference. Then I'm going to divide that by 8.96 times 100, and that's going to give me 2.01% error. Now it's your turn to do some practice on Canvas.